Are you kidding me? I'm taking this home. Hey guys, wow, he's so fast. So this video is going to be totally different as I am going to be taking the Mac Studio to its limits by testing it with heavy audio editing timeline, heavy motion graphics, and also working on a full 12K resolution files to see how well it performs. And no, I'm not doing this alone as I'll be inviting people who do this work as their career. Want to know who is that? Well, let's find out. So the first person that I wanted to call was someone who I haven't seen for almost two years and he fits the first test that I wanted to do with the Mac Studio. This is Roshan Jamrock, a music producer and also famously known for the group K-Town Clan from Malaysia who has performed in the Philippines and in South Korea and have been active in the music industry for close to 17 years. He has produced songs in English, Malay, Mandarin and even in the Tamil language for the legend Rajni Khan's movies and has worked with artists such as Joe Flizo and Mo.
Okay. okay, so I'm going to put a little twist. According to Roshan, he said we can put up to four to five hundred tracks. So let's put four to five hundred tracks right okay. now, shall we? Then let's see, ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> let's try. Okay, let's Now that we are done with audio, I want you to call a person who is crushing his VFX work with Adobe After Effects on YouTube for him to experience a difference since he's using a high-end gaming PC. This is Mo aka MDMZ. He has close to 200,000 subscribers on YouTube who makes tutorials on Adobe Photoshop and Adobe After Effects and loves experimenting on projects that involve 2D composition, animations and VFX. Now he's also working with me to produce all of the thumbnails, the Instagram photos and the VFX works on Adam Lobo TV as well. Obviously, whenever I start a project, there is a deadline or there is a time that I need. There's, there's a certain time frame that I need to finish the project within. So if my PC uh, runs slow or my, even if After Effects or Photoshop loads slowly, that's going to affect my project. That's going to affect the timeline, going to affect my project, especially if I'm working for a client or I have really important video to pub publish. As you know, this actually happened to me today where a video I finished yesterday, I'm supposed to publish it today. I set my own deadline for that on YouTube. I put, leave it overnight and it actually froze. So when I woke up this morning, I was completely failed. The rendering completely failed, which previously me working on uh, Mac OS, I remember in college when we do heavy, heavy projects and all, I don't remember this happening at all. So this kind of things happen on Windows, I feel, only. So like, you know, I, I do many, um, like various types of visual stuff. So I do Photoshop, I do After Effects, but you know how much I love adding like fire, distortion stuff, all those glowy effects and all. And that really requires so much resources. Whenever I have a project that involves that type of, of effects, it, my PC really struggles. I cannot play back the video in full resolution on After Effects, for example. I have always to go to quarter. I have always, I always have to build proxy files, which takes so much time, it, it really affects my workflow. Uh, so I would say that's one of the biggest challenges, Those that kind of plugins I cannot live without. The other bigger cha challenge is I love to shoot in high res quality. I know you also love this. And whenever I shoot 4K or higher, loading that footage in, adding certain effects to it on top, 
it's just so frustrating. I cannot work without creating proxies, so that really slows me down. I think my biggest issue happens when dealing with high-res footage, especially if projects like this one. It's not um, a video file, it's an image file. So I'm building a sequence out of really high-res images, and I have certain uh, effects that involve footage analyzing, like tracking, stabilizing, maybe denoising the footage, things like that that require some computing power. And that's where I feel like my computer gets to a point where it even fails sometimes. After Effects might even crash on me, where I have to restart it, I have to purge memory, I have to clear the cache, I have to downscale the resolution, the preview resolution. And sometimes I even have to restart my computer to get it to run properly. Okay, so this is one of the uh, type of videos that I started doing recently. It's kind of trendy right now on Instagram. There's a lot of reads that do this. Uh, it looks simple, where you have a bunch of shots that you take with your phone or, or camera. Obviously, it looks shaky at the beginning because you're, you're taking different pictures without a tripod. You're just walking and taking a bunch of photos one after the other. And then the idea is that to take that footage and stabilize it in post, it, it looks quite smooth and dynamic, looks quite nice, especially if there's some movement in the back, you can add some effects to it. It looks simple. It looks like you don't meet, need much time for this. Import photos, stabilize. But the truth is there's a lot of computing involved. There's a lot of footage anal analyzing involved. So you, there are a few steps you need to go through where you have to track uh, certain points in your footage first to kind of uh, lock the subject in and make it easier to stabilize and then you have to actually add in the actual stabilizer effect to get this smooth movement. So right now I think I'll go through the steps roughly, maybe recreate this uh, real quick here. I want to see how fast it runs, how if I go through any issues, if it lags, if it fails. Right now I can see the preview runs. Okay, so first of all I will, I will do the stabilize motion step. I'm really curious how fast it goes because this is obviously After Effects analyzing like frame by frame. Sometimes here the tracker goes out, which is completely fine. It's After Effects not knowing where the pixel went. So that way I just have to go a bit wider. But from what I've seen in the first uh, few frames, it seems to be quite fast because honestly on my, my, on my setup, it takes so long to move from one frame to the other. So this is... I know this would save me a lot of time already because I can quickly pause, go back and fix if there's any... Like as I said earlier, it seems simple, but there's a bit of manual work involved in this type of project where you have to go back and fix the tracker. But the good thing here is that After Effects is running frame by frame, not taking so long, you know, it's quite, quite good. So, okay, usually I add the effect and I, I collapse the advanced uh, list here, the advanced settings, and I'm, I'm just... I'm gonna go through, play with some settings because play, uh, working with footage like this, there's distortion and things like that. So you need to kind of adjust extra settings here. And usually this, you've seen the, the process going just now from yeah. zero to hundred, right? So usually on my setup, it did, doesn't even start until I'm done with all these settings. It still says analyzing usually. But now I put the effect in, I'm about to go play with the settings and the process is already done. <laughs> That's really, really impressive. That's next level. And I've enabled detailed analysis here, which means that After Effects should take much more time to analyze. But surprisingly, it's done. Usually, usually it's probably like 10% at this point, at this time. I go have lunch. You know, I'm serious, man. I go have lunch, I go watch TV, come back. And if it fails, I have to restart. I'm gonna restart it just for fun. Enable, uh, enhance, go 100%. Oh, dude, look at this. I'm taking this home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the idea here is to use a video enhancer, a software that, that the main objective from this software is to take a low resolution video and upscale it to, if it's 720, you can upscale it to 1080p, to 4K, to 8K. So what I'm gonna do here is, because this type of process usually takes so long, the higher the resolution you wanna upscale to, the slower it will be. So I'm gonna put this to the like, ultimate test. 
I will get a 720p video. I'm gonna try to upscale it to 8K. Usually I do 4K, I've never tried 8K because at 4K I'm already struggling. It takes so much time already. Okay, I'm ready to start. Okay, let's start and see how it goes. Bro, I was expecting this to be like 40 minutes, you know, 45 from 720 to 4K. How long is the clip? Couple of seconds, yes, but usually, usually it's like, like frame after one, after the other, after the other. This is going as if I'm just playing back the, playing back the video at just slower speed. Wow, dude, are you kidding me? Details restored on the spikes and all on the plants also. It's quite crazy what's happening with AI these days. I think whenever I have like upscaling projects, I'm gonna bring a hard drive full of videos to you, Adam. <laughs> Plug it in. <laughs> Just run everything here. <laughs> Dude, this is crazy. You know, sometimes I do um, the tutorial videos about this and I pull out my setup on the screen just to show people to understand like, okay, it took me this long and this is, this is the type of hardware I have. Because I, I mentioned that this is still not enough for me and people are like, get angry all the time. They're like, dude, you have the best GPU, you have the best CPU, how is this not enough? Guys, come and look at this. And now tell me that's, that that's good. This is next level. So we tested out audio editing. We tested out After Effects visual editing and of course the visual effects but how about video editing? Well, guess what? I have this special person to help me out with that. This fella! <laughs> this is Salih Hodin, aka Lee Hood. He's currently the video producer and editor on Adam Lobo TV for more than a year and has been producing tech videos for about 6 years plus with the biggest Malay tech media company in Malaysia, Amans, who has produced almost 200 videos for that company and has travelled and covered various tech events like IFA, Computex and Mobile World Congress and all of the major local tech events. Okay, right now I'm using a 40-inch MacBook Pro M1 Max. It's still powerful to this day, but the real challenge is when I'm editing 6K footage in quality mode, not performance mode. Then top it with a bunch of plugins, uh, tracking to make the video looks good. And also uh, I, uh, when I scroll it, the timeline fast, zoom in, zoom out, and uh, that's the where the challenge is, it becomes lag a bit. Sometimes it froze out. Uh, so sometimes, uh, even though I'm a video editor, I also can do like a little bit of uh, animation. So I have to open like Adobe Illustrator uh, to extract some assets. It's best for me to open both software at once so that I can adjust it accordingly. Lah. With my current MacBook, it's actually, you can feel the lag a bit when you play and you edit the graphics on the Adobe then uh, alternate tab to the Final Cut later on. So I think that's kind of a bummer for me. So today uh, we got a few tests. First thing uh, we gonna convert from 12K Blackmagic RAW to ProRes 422. Then we gonna test the 12K ProRes playback after uh, that, we have 12K render on FCPX. One, uh, just one minute project with color grade and titles with the stabilization on. After that, we also have the 6K Blackmagic RAW to ProRes 42 conversion. Finally, we have the 6K render on FCPX. Okay, this is the moment of truth, guys. Let's go, let's test this out. Oh my god. It's so fast. Now it's like 48 seconds and going faster than we should. And it's done. This one takes another 51 seconds to end. This is like, you imagine if you're converting something like 30 minutes. And this one took like extra 30 minutes. That's how, how much time you save. Uh, actually guys, I can hear the fan of the MacBook if you can hear it. See, it starts like and this Mac Studio is, uh, you can barely hear anything but it's like chilling here. One, two, three. Oh, 
okay it's quite both both are actually smooth yeah no no the footage is moving so far is okay for both no struggle on the macbook m1 max as for this mac studio is also no struggle it's like chilling okay so i decide to do something crazy here because uh now we got 10 streams of 12k footage to see how it performs i already put it in timeline 10 here and 10 here so let's see how it goes both are in quality mode not performance mode so i can see it's like it's quite smooth here on the mac studio and on the macbook it's quite jittery here you see hey guys wow this is like 10 stream of 12k it's not even 8k so this is kind of mind blowing this is my first time in my life i i did 12k this move okay the file size is not much of difference 0.1 mb only so let's try to export now uh, it's already 21% for the Mac Studio. It's almost the same. Oh wow, this is so fast with the title. And mind you, this is a 12K footage. And it's done now. Okay, uh, uh, pretty much the same, but this is uh, a little bit faster. Wow, I am impressed actually. Let's see how the payback looks at. Yeah, the video is perfect. So we're done with 12K, so I just gonna try it on the 6K Blackmagic RAW to progress conversion. So one, two. Oh wow, it's so fast, it's like few seconds only. And it's done already, it's only seven seconds. This one took uh, the M1 Max took 10 seconds. Uh. I know the 6K would do well on both, but yeah, still uh, we can see it's like a little bit of difference between both. And I'll mention uh, about how the tracking slowed down the overall process. So I added uh, the tracking part just a little bit to see how it performs here. So let's try it out. Three. Okay. Okay. Now it's, it's quite fast on the Mac Studio. It's evenly fast actually. The Mac Studio. Uh, it's faster is like by 10% according to bar now it's 50% already this saved me so much time right? I think it's done already only. yeah the difference is like around 10% it's not much different but still uh, for 6k video both perform well but this Mac Studio is will save a lot of your time actually this mission is so game changing and it's life changing actually you can save lots of time especially for me who need to convert from b-roll to ProRes first which is i think based on the speed test we use i would save like half an hour let's say if my conversion needs 30 minutes now i only need like 50 minutes that is actually lots of time I could spend elsewhere, maybe editing, maybe shooting. From what I see here, the rendering time is about the same, but where the big, the huge difference is when uh, you putting uh, all the plugin, all the tracking. What we call is the real time processing is so fast, much faster. You can feel it. Okay, coming here today, uh, I didn't know at all about this machine. But after trying this, it was every penny because it improved your workflow greatly. So you will uh, save a lot of time with these machines. Alright guys, so that is the conclusion on the whole entire real-time test for the Mac Studio for certain situations or different kind of situations depending on the type of work that you do. Now, if you ever wondered whether or not the Mac Studio is worth the money, well, this answers your question. And if you ever wondered who the Mac Studio is for, well, 
This video also says it all. I also like to give a special thanks towards Roshan Jamrock, Mo and also Lee Hood for giving their input on a real-time situation test as well. Now, if you guys are enjoying this kind of vlogging, real-time test situations, let me know in the comment section below. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. My name is Adam Lobo and I'll see you in our next video.